Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It's like a real honor to be back in Vancouver to be sharing this film with you. I wanted to thank Janice and the rest of the KDOX Film Festival, um, you know, for programming this film as, as part of the Journeys in Solidarity Film Fest. And also for hosting like this really dynamic panel of um, of speakers after, so we can have you know make room for a kind of cross community discussion. So I'm really excited actually about the post film uh, talk that we're going to be having. Um, so yeah, uh, so I thought I guess I would start by talking a little bit about my journey as a filmmaker and the journey of you know making this film because Chinatown obviously plays a big role in both. Um, so a bit about me, I'm a fifth generation uh, Chinese Canadian on my father's side. And you know, family lore has it that my great grandfather actually used to own the entire 100 block Kiefer Street in Vancouver's Chinatown, which um, today is a site of much contention with the community's you know, struggle against this development at 105 Kiefer. Um, on my Montreal side, my other uh, great-grandfather was actually one of the original partners in Wings Noodles, which is a business that you'll see in the film. Um, and, you know, some of my, uh, like, fondest memories of growing up are actually of having my grandmother take me around Montreal's Chinatown. She was born in Montreal's Chinatown in 1919, and she would kind of take me into these, like, magical places in Chinatown where everyone kind of knew her name. And I remember like going to this Nanking Bakery, which was always, you know, full to capacity with people. And she would, um, you know, put money in my hand, and then I would kind of like duck under the crowd up to the front counter of this bakery. And then she would yell over the crowd in Toy San. And then these men who are kind of wearing these paper hats and have cigarettes hanging out of their mouths. Um, they would fill my arms full of these like cardboard boxes of amazing pastries. Um, so, you know, Chinatown is a place that has like a lot of uh, deep family connection for me, but it's actually also the place where um, I cut my teeth as a filmmaker. Uh, 20 years ago, um, the very first documentary film I made was a film called In the Shadow of Gold Mountain. Um, it was shot in Montreal and Vancouver's Chinatowns, and uh, it was a film about the uh, Chinese Head Tax and Exclusion Act. So, you know, when that film was finished, it actually um, was released and it screened in Chinatowns all across the country. And it was in those screenings, those community screenings and working with these kind of head tax um, activists at the time that I really um, saw for the first time the potential that documentary has um, to be an agent for change. You know, at, at that time, I was really kind of pursuing a career um, in fiction filmmaking but it was actually being taken, you know, taken in by these community storytellers and these documentarians, people like Sid Tan, uh, Kenda G, William Deere, Jim Wong Chu, um, these people who really showed me the power of representation and the need for, you know, storytelling from a community point of view. So after, you know, this amazing experience, I, it was like documentary all the way for me. Um, so, you know, with this film now, like 20 years later, um, the, I guess that some of the ideas behind it was um, seeing these Chinatowns, you know, these places that I knew and I loved, seeing them kind of in these um, moments of, um, you know, uh, kind of active erasure. And, you know, in Montreal, my own Chinatown, we had lost our cultural center. Um, the Chinatown gate had two giant gaping holes on either side of it where they were, you know, breaking ground for these kind of luxury condos. And I remember um, one of the things that like incensed me the most was going on to one of these developers' websites and seeing how in the mock-up of their condo project, they had completely erased the Chinatown gate and their project was like right beside the gate. And then they described their condo as being in this kind of like fictitious luxury area of the downtown core. Um, you know, right between the old port and the Place des Arts. And that neighborhood has a name, it's called Chinatown. And, you know, it was like mind boggling to me how, uh, you know, like the history and the presence of a people that had been in that neighborhood for like 150 years could be so easily just erased by this like one paragraph on a developer's website. So, you know, it's really like then as a filmmaker, when I started to think hard about like, what is my role and responsibility to this neighborhood that had literally like given me my voice. Um, and I started thinking about making this film. 
so, you know, early in the research of, of making this film, I attended this kind of like Chinese Canadian uh, leadership conference uh, that took place in Calgary. And it's there that I met people like Kevin Wong, who's going to be part of our discussion later, and Melody Ma, who, you know, they're tabling outside uh, with Chinatown together. But I met, you know, Kevin and Melody and all these people who were kind of part of this younger generation of Chinatown organizers who were really kind of like challenging the traditional power structures uh, of Chinatown and really kind of connecting the dots on the save, you know, Chinatown issues with lord, lar larger social justice um, you know, struggles. So, I, you know, I remember like Kevin and his group, they, they had, they described Chinatown as a kind of neighborhood of sanctuary for marginalized groups. And I'd never thought of Chinatown in that way before or heard it described in that way. So it really kind of like opened up my understanding of the neighborhood. And it's, you know, it's really these moments, like as a filmmaker, you know, these things that never make it into the film, but totally change your way of understanding something. Um, I remember, like Henry Yu, who will be moderating this discussion later, you know, him telling me at the very beginning, like warning me, you know, not to flatten history in my storytelling. And, and people like Andy Yan, who's an urban planner, um, really, you know, kind of comparing Chinatown to a well-seasoned walk, you know, like, like something that has lots of patina, and it's that, that patina um, that actually gives the neighborhood authenticity and flavor. And I also remember Mei Lum, who's a subject in the film you're going to see, um, talking about, like, um, small landlords in Chinatown and these kind of legacy businesses that really are anchors for the community and help to keep the neighborhood in lock. So it, it's these kind of like insights that really became the North Star uh, for me in terms of, you know, framing my approach um, to the story. And, you know, it was also like I, I, I got involved with uh, Coast to Coast Chinatowns Against Displacement, this kind of group of very progressive Chinatown organizers all across uh, North America. And it was really in working with these organizers that I also had to reflect uh, a, a lot on, you know, how not to be extractive in my own filmmaking, right? Like, go into these communities, take their stories, and then kind of, like, go off to the film festival, right? Like, how not to be that kind of person. Um, but, you know, also in, like, knowing all these people, meeting all these people from Chinatown, um, you know, when I saw, like, all over the media, there were these stories, right, of, like, Chinatown being this dead and dying place. The National Post, like, literally put in, uh, an, uh, they had an article, like, the, the headline of it was, like, you know, the death knell for Chinatown. And while Chinatown is obviously facing, like, very serious and real issues, I also knew that the community had a lot of agency, right? Like gentrification isn't something that just happens while you sit there and passively watch, right? So I was very much interested in exploring that side of the story, you know, the kind of what if and why not part of Chinatown. Um, and, you know, in making this film, like you get like so into the weeds of making the film. So I also began to realize and see Chinatown like beyond the Chinatown gate. And, I in, and see it as a kind of vi vital ecosystem for our city. Um, you know, Chinatown is a quint a quintessentially, you know, it's a human scale, a walkable, affordable, sustainable neighborhood. Um, it, it, it shows us the, the potential of what like a dream neighborhood could be. And Chinatown is also, you know, a beacon for other communities um, who are facing active erasure and displacement as well. So, you know, at the core, I kind of wanted the documentary to be like the story of a neighborhood, right? A, a neighborhood that's rooted in the past, um, a historic neighborhood, but also something that was very key to unlocking the future potential of what our cities could be. Um, and of course, I also wanted to give audiences a glimpse of this Chinatown that my grandmother had first revealed to me. You know, this Chinatown kind of beyond the, the storefront facade or, or the, the, you know, like the storefront window. And, you know, the Chinatown of back kitchens, uh, basements, second story mahjong parlors, family gathering places, these kind of sites of generational um, community resistance and resilience. So, you know, and going back to like, the lessons that I learned from that very first documentary I made and all the community screenings we had, when this film um, w was finished, um, 
we, we embarked on a year long, and we're, we're getting into our year now, a, a community impact campaign with this film. You know, we wanted to bring the film back into the communities that had given us their stories, but also to push this kind of model of uh, documentary distribution, which is kind of, you know, all about like the box office numbers or the bottom line, right? Like how to really push that more. So to date, you know, we've held over 125 in-person screenings of the film. So welcome to screening like 126. Um, you know, and we've, we've partnered with uh, 68 uh, community organizations and Chinatown businesses. Um, we've brought the film into 15 North American Chinatowns. And we've used the screenings as opportunities, you know, to fundraise over $13,000 for various, like, Chinatown initiatives and projects. Um, there is a sign-up table for Chinatown Together. Please sign up for their newsletter and to know all about their amazing events as well. Um, but you know, and also as our impact tour is kind of like wrapping up now, um, we've just released a kind of do-it-yourself screening kit. Um, and it, it comprises of like an education guide and a discussion guide so we can really help empower more community groups and institutions to hold their own screenings and to have the kind of discussions that I'm really excited that you know we'll be having today. So anyways, all, all this to say, uh, you know, for me, Chinatown, was is a very special place and, and it was really the place where I learned to be a filmmaker. So this film is my love letter to Chinatown. Thank you. <laughs>